This is the Lauer 6mm F2 Dreamer. Not sure why it's called a Dreamer, but I was approached by Lauer and they're like, would you like to have a go with this lens? And I said, yeah, go on then, this sounds bizarre. And to put it into context, they emailed me around the time of my probe lens fetish. So that's kind of where I was at. And I was like, yeah, wide, wide is good. And we also, at the time, were using the Blackmagic 4K. So this was the perfect lens for video. Super, super wide. Now I'm gonna tell you, because I managed to get them agree to, well, let me do whatever I wanted with this and say whatever I wanted. I'm gonna tell you why I said yes to it, what was good about it, and also now why I'm selling it. Um, it's actually sold, it's gone. It's going in the post tomorrow. So this should be on someone's doorstep on Monday morning. So this lens here, super wide. It has done one of the great things that many lens manufacturers don't do today. For those new to photography, you might not even recognize this little bit here, but this is your depth of field preview. If you're at F4 and you focus at about 0.5 meters away, you get everything from 0.5 to infinity in focus. And this here lets you know that. It is called hyperfocal. Um, it is, it's a great way just to like zone focus your camera. So we were gonna use it for behind the scenes footage and we did, check it out. And we use it for behind the scenes because we had it on a gimbal. You don't have to focus the lens. It just is, it is all sharp all over. Now, of course it is super wide, but that's great for behind the scenes because often you want to tell the story and you want to show all of that goodness. The downside to super wide is that when your face goes into the corner of the frame, you look a little peculiar, but we can live with that. It's a wide look, it's an aesthetic. It can do some great stuff creatively. And, and that's why I said yes to it. Um, and we're very happy with it. It does a great job. Now, of course, this is not a stupidly expensive lens. It is not insanely sharp. It is not bulletproof. It doesn't have like perfect edge sharpness, vignetting and all the rest of it. It has all of those foibles but they're all fixable with a click of a button in Lightroom if you're doing stills or in DaVinci if you're doing video. The build quality itself is pretty darn good. This is a metal built-in lens hood. You know, the whole thing's metal construction. That, very pleased with. Overall, for the price, I don't think you could get a better lens for what we wanted it for. Now, I know that this particular lens attracts a lot of architecture, street sort of, scenery, landscape sort of photographers. I'm not personally convinced that a lens this wide is suited to that sort of work. You have to have your camera completely straight because the converging lines will just be insane. There's not enough resolution in a lens like this to fix it in post and keep a good image. But where I do think this is really useful is in a tight spot. If I was a wedding videographer, if I was a wedding photographer, if I needed that shot of the entire party sort of doing their thing, that's what I'd want. If we were on set and we've got a super busy behind the scenes, unfortunately the, the, um, the shoot we filmed was a really small advert, so there's only like five of us in the room, but say there's a 15 person crew and there's stuff everywhere, this can be really useful. This is what you want. Of course, it's a compromise, you get super distortion, it's not sharp in the corners, but, it gets everything in, it shows you the scene, it shows you what's going on. And often we go back to our behind the scenes videos. So having a lens like this is super useful and I'll get to why I'm selling it, but having a lens like this is super useful because having it so wide means that I can watch the footage back when we get booked to do part two of the shoot. Of course, we always record it all on paper. We draw a technical diagram, but sometimes things get lost in translation and having that video to show somebody to grab a still from and go, look, here's the setup, that is very useful. Now, why am I selling it? You might be asking. If it, if it is all these things, and of course I've mentioned the downsides, why am I selling it? And the simple answer to the question is, we don't have any Micro Four Thirds cameras anymore. They're all gone. So I have no use for it. The cameras I was going to use on are now gone. I can't find something for my current batch of film cameras, which are 6K RAWs, that is this wide and this light eating as F2. Um, let me know in the comments below if there is something out there because it is something I would like to replace because this was a really useful bit of kit for the old behind the scenesies. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this very short review, but I thought, you know, most of these reviews, they talk about loads of really boring stuff. And I thought I'd give you some real world examples as to when it is good and isn't good. If you like this sort of thing, let me know in the comments below and I can review other kit like this. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.